Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for uh, the week of September 5th. We're gonna jump right in here, Aquarius. And uh, in your first row, we're gonna take a look at your general energies for the week. Uh, I have the word like problem solver or something like that popping into my head. So uh, I kind of feel like this is a good thing as well. So whatever, if there are problems in your life, I feel like you could be solving them. Um, even if there aren't problems in your life, there are always things that we can kind of like work on. And that's kind of how I'm taking the energy, but uh, let's keep it let's keep it moving. Uh, in this next row, we're gonna look at anything unexpected that could be coming in for you. And in the row after that, we're gonna look at what you need to know at this time uh, for this week right here. And then in your last row, we're gonna look at any advice from your guides and boom, <laughs> this rabbit card, is the card of the problem solver. So there you go. Um, that makes perfect sense to me. So on top of all that, we're gonna pull three yes or no question cards at the end, of course, and uh, we're gonna go from there. This looks pretty good. Uh, in the first row here for just your general energies, you have the full moon in Aquarius. It just says, show the world the real you. So this could be about you being more authentic or kind of revealing something to the world. I would just say that I think it's pretty much impossible for <laughs> like the truth not to come out in situations. I've been talking about this uh, literally for years that, you know, I think for a lot of us, the truth is coming out. Not that there are lies, but just, um, you know, I think that we're kind of moving more and more towards an authentic energy. And before I light a card on fire, let me just move this candle out of the way. But, um, you know, what I would say here is that I feel there could be some you know, this could be more about you operating from your heart. You even have this deer spirit, which is all about like kind of operating from your heart. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, in your first row here, you have the two of cups, the lovers and the seven of cups. Um, you know, as far as love is concerned, obviously there could be a lot of options with these seven of cups, or I don't really look at it as options as in having multiple people, although lovers and two of cups, it could be multiple people. But to me, it could just say that you have options in the sense that like, what are you gonna do <laughs> in your love life? So I've been getting this question quite a bit for you. I, th I think it's you, or maybe it's Pisces, I don't remember, but you know, either way, I feel for a lot of you, you could be saying like, what role you know, do I want love to play in my life? That could be like a dominant energy for you where you're just kind of thinking about that question. Uh, it's funny that I said Pisces as well because Seven of Cups, Ace of Pentacles to the moon right here. This Observer card is looking at the moon as well, which I find interesting. So some of you could be a Pisces that you're interested in, or uh, it could just be saying that you're observing love. That Observer card is literally a card of looking at something from a neutral perspective, meaning that you're not really making any decisions one way or the other, but you're kind of just gathering the information. And that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, you also have the lovers here. Definitely a new path opening for you at this time. I feel this is true for basically everyone. I mean, we're all being asked to, again, live more authentically, I believe, to be more human, to kind of do the things that we actually want to do, not maybe what like a corporation wants us to do or you know a person wants us to do if you have someone who you feel is controlling you, which I actually see here in this reading. That's why I'm saying that. So just living more yourself, right? And, and so some of you, like, again, I've been saying this for years, like by 2025, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, speaking to corporations, if you have a corporate job, you could be quitting and doing something different, right? And, or you could be, or maybe not, <laughs> you know, it, it depends on um, what your heart is really telling you to do, right? So as long as you're listening to your heart, I feel like you're going to be making the right decisions. Even if we look at the two of cups here, this is, you know, could be love, but I always say that two of cups is like you and your higher self. This right here is a staff of Hermes and it's tied to Mercury. And so a lot of you could be just communicating with your higher self or you could be communicating with your guides and ancestors or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there is some sort of ego thing here. You know, this lion here kind of represents the ego. It could be positive or negative, but number one, I think the word ego gets way overused in the spiritual community in the first place, number one. We, I mean, we basically need an ego to survive, right? So I don't think there is such a thing. And every single person I've ever seen who talks about completely eliminating the ego has like the biggest ego I've ever seen in my entire life. So you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Doth protest too much, as they say. But what I would say here is that I feel for a lot of you, it's not ego, it's just more, you know, I think it's ego in the sense that sometimes maybe we have a career 
and it makes us a bunch of money, but we actually want to go be a ballerina or something like that, or maybe we want to dress up as a dinosaur, as I love saying, and just like walk around and do, I don't know, make YouTube videos or something. And, uh, but society says, oh no, you can't do that, right? So that's what I mean by ego. It's kind of like part of us says, I can't do this because it's not acceptable, which is kind of like ego thinking. But it looks to me that you are overcoming this, which is pretty nice because it could lead to a nice transformation. You have the Two of Cups, you have the Page of Cups, Definitely could be a love offer coming in for you here. Although it is interesting because I do feel it's kind of more at the back of your mind, you know, with that observer card. It doesn't seem like it's a, you know, like a major thing that you're just like thinking about, thinking about, thinking about, but it's more in the background, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> That's how it's popping into my reading, in, into the reading here. Uh, the page of cups could also be a dream. You know, I always say that fish in that cup is something that he needs to grab onto. And speaking of fish, again, you have the moon card, Pisces, but this could be a Piscean dream. Again, we have Neptune and Pisces. Neptune and Pisces is, again, crazy ideas, crazy dreams. You know, we could have these ideas to build some sort of crazy business or to quit our job and write a book or quit our job, move to an island and write a book, right? There's probably something extra in there. And, you know, I just feel like this reading is saying, grab onto it, make it happen. Uh, with the lovers, you have the five of cups. Uh, there could be like regrets and sadness in a love situation, but I feel like you need to realize that there are some pretty big opportunities coming in for you right here. I mean, ace of pentacles. So, you know, I feel like you need to see what you still do have in your life. Uh, with the seven of cups, you have the uh, queen of swords. I'm pretty sure I said this to you in a recent reading. Queen of swords, king of swords. So again, it doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to here. I do feel like some of you could be kind of dealing with like a no contact situation in your life and uh, we'll have to see where that's going. Uh, next in the area of the unexpected, you have this trust card. It says approach the situation with a light heart. So whatever you're dealing with in your life, I would, you know, obviously approach it with a light heart or a, a light, yeah, light hearted nature. But I kind of feel this is more saying be heart based. Like what does your heart tell you to do? in all situations. I think it could be unexpected because you actually do it <laughs> this week. I, I don't really feel this is unexpected as in, you know, something unexpected is coming in for you. It's kind of funny because I said to one of the other signs, it's like some weeks, you know, I do split these up. It kind of makes it more entertaining for me as a reader. It makes it more entertaining, I think, for some of you as what viewers to like split these readings up like this. But, you know, some, some weeks I feel like there just is nothing like unexpected showing up. So I will tell you, you know, I'll tell you the truth when I feel like there's really nothing unexpected. I think what's unexpected maybe is that you actually kind of do follow your heart and you do something uh, this week that might be just like a little unusual, but in a good way. You know, maybe uh, you kind of take some sort of risk this week is what this looks like. Or again, you follow your heart. You have the four of cups, the ace of pentacles and the queen of cups. Queen of Cups is an energy of following your heart. She is very focused on that cup that she is holding right there. And that cup to me represents her heart, you know? It kind of looks like a trophy. And I always say that she values her emotions over everything else. And she really values how she feels about things. So she doesn't stay in situations that make her feel bad. She creates situations that make her feel good, right? And she focuses on those things as well. And so that's exactly what I would do with the Queen of Cups is just focus on the positive. You know, every time I say this, someone always asks, well, you know, there's all these bad things that are happening in the world. And I'm like, great, um, but focusing on them isn't going to fix it, right? And the other thing is, it's like, I've just noticed throughout life, like, trust me, I used to be like the king of stinking thinking, as I always say. And, you know, it's like, I just noticed, I started to notice that there were people who were always positive. Life always just seemed to go the right direction for those people. And they like never had problems. Or when they did have problems, they had a positive way to look at it and they turned it around, right? Temperance, right here. And, you know, that's what changed my life. <laughs> I just started thinking more positively and I just started ignoring the negative stuff, right? And I just noticed, again, people that did that had good lives. People who don't do that have bad lives. So it's like, it's your choice. What, you know, what do you want? You have the Ace of Pentacles here. I do feel there could be a big opportunity coming in for you, but this is like something that you're working on uh, in your life. I do get like a big change and it's 10-10 at the time of me. I, I wanna see if I can get this without showing you the timer. Oh, wait, I'm gonna have to switch it. Do I, do I have time to show you? <laughs> it's not gonna focus, oh my God. But anyway, just it, it was 10-10. I don't know why I won't focus, but anyway, 10-10 as I said that. And I feel like there's a big opportunity, probably like a life-changing opportunity. I don't really, I'm not really that into numerology, so I don't know what 1010 means, but I kind of think, for some reason, I feel like it's something about like a big change or a life change. Uh, you have the four cups here. 
And four of cups is about kind of disappointments. I feel like you have to let go of past disappointments or situations that are constantly disappointing you. And that could also be like what's unexpected. For some of you, I feel maybe you've had some attachments. It's weird. I put that king of swords down when I started your reading and I was getting the word like attachments or, you know, something along those lines, right? And I feel that some of you are removing some attachments, some things where you kind of feel like you are responsible for them. It could be anything. It could be people. It could be responsibilities. It could be anything. Kind of surprised that Ten of Wands didn't show up here as well. Although we're going to clarify, maybe it'll show up. But um, I feel what's unexpected is maybe you're kind of releasing some things that you kind of feel like are attachments, but I feel like you're realizing how these negative things affect your life is kind of what I'm getting here. With the four of cups, you have the fool. Yes, definitely taking a leap of faith. I feel like you need something new is what this reading is also saying. It's like maybe you've just been living the same cycle over and over and over again, kind of like nine of swords types of, type of vibe here. I would say this is a positive reading because it's like you're getting out of the nine of swords and it doesn't even show up here. With the ace of pentacles, again, I feel like something is coming in for you this week where it's just going to feel right and I would move towards it. I wouldn't question it. I wouldn't, you know, kind of look too much into it. I don't think we should do anything blindly necessarily <laughs> Aquarius but what I would say is sometimes I think we can just get a good opportunity and then we start overthinking it and then we don't do it so if you're presented with an opportunity for anything I would I would jump on it with the queen of cups you have the ace of cups are you kidding me uh definitely a very solid you know fulfilling week for you this week Ace of Cups is your emotions overflowing. I feel like your emotions are going to be the things that are moving mountains this week. You know, if you're trying to overcome obstacles or get anything that you want, I feel like it's your emotions, the positive emotions that are moving you forward. Uh, in the next row of what you need to know uh, at this time, you have this Observer card. You also have the Moon, the King of Swords, and the Eight of Pentacles here. The Observer card is about kind of be being in a neutral position. This fox or I don't know, what is that? Yeah, it looks like a fox to me. It's looking at that moon but it's kind of from far away and it's in a neutral position. It's not really, you know, stressing itself out. It's not really making any moves here other than the fact that it's looking at that moon. And that's really what's jumping out at me here. I also think it's interesting that you have the fox and then the rabbit, you know, foxes hunt rabbits. It's kind of interesting that the two are showing up here. And, it, and that is something that's standing out to me. I don't know, we're gonna have to look into that, but I feel like you're observing the moon, which we see here in this first part of the reading. The moon can be fears, illusions, fantasies, you know, all the typical stuff that everyone says, nightmares. Uh, it can represent a temporary period of time as well. There's also a dog and a coyote or a dog and a wolf right here, so kind of like a fox. But on the moon card, it kind of represents the moon. You know, the moon can kind of is said to control like wolves, for example, right? They howl at the moon, right? And I kind of feel that this is saying, don't allow your emotions to kind of control you like this. I feel you need to be in control. It's like you are the one that should be in control of your emotions. It shouldn't be your fears, your anxieties, rabbits. Rabbits are fearful little creatures, right? They're kind of like nervous little creatures. And I feel that here where um, it's like your emotions shouldn't control you. You sh should happen to your emotions this week or make sure that you do that with the moon card. I also feel that, again, you're observing some sort of dream. I always say the moon card in the tarot is really like a big dream, wish, or goal that you need that you need to bring down to earth. It's something that you need to ground in reality. And I kind of feel that for you here with this moon card is that there's something you're thinking about planning in your life or something that could be a good experience. And I feel like you need to bring it down. You have the king of swords. Again, I get some sort of attachment word. It almost feels separate from this part of the reading. Sometimes that happens where I just feel like a card is kind of separate from the reading. It's just a, maybe an external influence to the reading. And so for some of you, I would be careful if there's anything like a negative person, a challenging person, or maybe even a challenging experience or something you feel is controlling you. I would be very careful um, you know, of those situations with the King of Swords. Other than that, this is you. So I, I feel like you're kind of showing up in a strong position here. You have the Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, like, get to work. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like Eight of Pentacles is a card of the work you put into things and what you get out of things. And with Eight of Pentacles, it's like if we put work into things, then we get a result very quickly. And Eight of Pentacles is all about that. So, you know, that's kind of what I get for you there. Uh, let's see what is going on for you. With the Moon, you have the Queen of Pentacles. Major focus on your resources. And I feel like you are very resourceful at this time. Pretty sure this came up in your September reading, just the monthly reading in general. And there's also a rabbit on the card right here, <laughs> right above my finger. On the Queen of Pentacles, the rabbit kind of represents fears and anxiety. She's focused on the pentacle. She's not focused on the fears and the anxiety. 
So again, kind of like another sign or symbol to me that is saying you need to be focused on using your emotions for your benefit, right? Thinking more positively, uh, trying to turn your emotions around with that temperance card as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, you know, I know it can be hard, especially when you're in an emotional space. If you are in an emotional space, you could also be really high. You could be high on life, having good emotions. So I'd make sure to channel those, you know, emotions into things. I always tell people, it's like controlling your emotions isn't about not having the emotion. It's like, if you're angry, be angry. If you're sad, be sad, <laughs> you know, but I think it's like what we do with the emotion that's important. And again, you know, since I'm hating on spiritual gurus here, it's like, you know, what I would say is that too many spiritual gurus, I think are like, oh, like they basically make it seem like you can have no emotions or you shouldn't be angry or you shouldn't be sad. But it's like, I don't think it's about removing those things. I think it's about integrating and working with the energy, which it looks like you're trying to figure out or do, or you are doing it. With the uh, King of Swords, you have the Six of Pentacles. Uh, part of me feels that if you're in an emotional situation, that the Six of Pentacles is literally saying what you give your energy to is controlling your emotions. You know, I've noticed this over like the past two or three years or so. It's like I've started putting my personal energy into things that give energy back to me. And well, wouldn't you know it? It's amazing how my life turns around. I tell a story like years ago, I was talking to this person. I had a person in my life and um, I was having this problem talking, like literally in these videos that I was doing every single week. Um, you know, it's like for months, I was having a problem talking. And it's like, what the hell is like, what the hell's wrong with me, right? And it's like, then it kind of struck me. I'm like, you know, this person's a super negative influence. I don't really like talking to them. And so I stopped talking to them. Guess what? <laughs> my life started turning around. I started being able to talk in the videos. So, you know, some I, I think that sometimes, I don't know if we do it on purpose or, you know, if our mind does it to us or something, but sometimes I think like people can literally have a physical, you know, effect on our life. And that's kind of what I see there. I, you know, some of you could be just needing to take your energy back and put it into things that are more positive. And I kind of feel like that's what you're doing. Again, he's giving to one person and not the other on the Six of Pentacles, which I feel is important. Here you go. With the Eight of Pentacles, you have the Justice card. I've been saying this all year. Justice is cause and effect. Justice is the answer to 2022. It's like, I would be paying attention to where you put your energy and what you get back. If you're giving to empty situations, then that's what you could be experiencing. When you give to abundance and give to positivity and all those other things, I feel like that's what you're gonna get back. I know it sounds obvious, but trust me, as a person who was stuck there for years and years and years and years, I totally understand being stuck in that situation, right? Uh, next in the area of messages from your guides, you have this rabbit card. Um, I kind of like this card as well. I mean, number one, I feel it's about listening. You know, th these rabbits have these big ears and that's kind of standing out to me here on this card. I also feel that there could be changes happening in leaps and bounds. So I do like rabbit energy because it can represent very quick changes where you're making big leaps forward. And I definitely feel that energy for you here on this rabbit energy. So, you know, I do like to see that. You have the temperance card, the seven of wands in the chariot. I think that the temperance card is again, talking about your emotions. Temperance is a card of temperance. It's a card of patience. It's a card of turning one thing into another. It's called alchemy as well. So I feel you have the power and I kind of actually feel that rabbit saying, what's gonna be surprising to, to you this week is just how quickly you can change your life by just changing your emotions. And again, as you know, I, I don't wanna brag here, but as someone who's done it, <laughs> I promise you that it's free and it's, you know, it sounds, I, I know it's hard to do in the moment, but once you start doing it, you know, I think you create a positive snowball and things speed up very, very quickly and your life starts to take a, po a turn for the positive. And again, that's why I preach this stuff all the time. I know it's annoying because trust me, when I was, you know, years ago, when I was in that position, I didn't want to hear about positive thinking or anything like that. I wanted to just be a just angry little troll, you know, just sit in my room crying all day. Although I wasn't crying, I was just stewing. I would just sit there and like stew and be angry and grit my teeth, right? So, you know, I kind of feel that here with that temperance energy. Uh, you know, again, some of you, I don't think it's that extreme, but you know, I'm just giving you some, I just think you really have the power this week to turn, to make good things happen, plain and simple. You have these seven of wands. Again, I feel like you're putting boundaries up against like devil, like energy with the seven of wands, pretty simple. And finally, you have the chariot. Definitely a lot of victories for you. I feel if you do this, um, I feel you have a lot of choices at this time. And you've been getting these readings of having choices. No one else no other sign gets this Aquarius. You can see that both these sphinxes on the chariot are facing in opposite directions. So I really feel that you have a lot of opportunity, a lot of choice this week in the direction that you take your life, but I would choose the positive. I would focus on what your heart wants, not what everyone else wants as well. Uh, with the temperance card, you have the, I threw it, you have the ace of swords. Ace of swords is a victory, success, you know, good things coming in for you. So 
definitely like to see that. There's a sense of justice here as well if you're dealing with something legal. With the Seven of Wands, you have the Lovers. You do have the Lovers twice. So, you know, some of you could be dealing with a love situation. The Seven of Wands basically says, you know, if you want love, open up to love. If you don't, then don't. But, <laughs> um, you know, I kind of feel, I do feel an energy of kind of making uh, this like a decision and that's it, you know, kind of. I, I might have said this to you recently, um, or I don't remember if it was you, but it's almost like a final decision. It's almost like once you make a decision to do something, that's it. And it could be involving love. You could be moving towards new love because lovers traditionally, you know, was new love or a new person. Uh, with the chariot, you have the two of wands. There you go. Uh, go. Like moving towards something new here. Here's the thing. I think sometimes when we remove one toxic thing from our life and we see the outcome of removing a toxic thing from our life, then we're like, okay, let's get rid of everything else. <laughs> and... I'm not saying like you're completely getting rid of people in your life. I just think that, again, with six of pentacles, right? I always tell people, it's like, if obviously, you know, everybody's different, right? And some some of us, I think, totally need to remove, if we have super toxic family members or something like that, we absolutely maybe need to remove them from our life or uh, friends or just situations. This could be like a job or a business as well. And, but at the same time, Six of Pentacles says, you don't really have to remove these people if it's people. You don't have to remove this job if it's a job. Maybe you just have to give energy to a different area of your life. It always reminds me of a story. I think it's Zig Ziglar. Who, he tells a story about a woman who was ha hated her job and came up to him and you know was yelling and screaming. I'm paraphrasing here. But basically, he told her, look, you, 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 you are looking at everything wrong with the job. He's like, I challenge you to you know go into the job and look at everything positive. And it's like the next time he saw her, she was still at job, had gotten a raise, was like friends with everybody, and totally turned it around. So, you know, I kind of see this reading. I know I'm a little bit preachy in this reading, sorry, but I kind of see this reading as you needing to turn situations in your life around. Or again, I'm not, things might be perfectly fine for you, Aquarius, but, and I feel that this is saying they could be even better, which there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're going to pull three yes or no questions. One, two, three, right here. So uh, feel free to pause the reading again. I'll show you again. One, two, three. Uh, for question number one, uh, I would say no. <laughs> I feel like this is like a significant change coming into your life, so I'd say no. For question number two, uh, there's the Ten of Wands, and I would also say no. Like, I feel like you just need to wrap something up here. You know, it's really, I, I don't, I think this is a yes, no, maybe type of question here for you, Aquarius, where it's like just bring something to an end and then, you know, move forward. For question number three, yeah, I would say no uh, here on question number three. I feel like you're walking away from something. So uh, weird reading for sure. The readings have been pretty weird this week. I'm not gonna lie. So it doesn't really surprise me, but thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you this week. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.